from Big Rex to Big Fella. There have been some crazy and ballsy Godzilla knockoff toys on the market. I'm gonna show you a whole lot of them. But first, let's pay the bills. Did you know that 2023 is the 50th anniversary of Zone Fighter? Not enough Godzilla fans talk about Zone Fighter. It's that Toku TV show Toho made about the superhero Zone Fighter who fought King Ghidorah and killed Gigan. He killed Gigan! And Godzilla guest starred a whole bunch. This is Showa Universe canon. And yet, it still feels kind of obscure. Of course, getting any Zone Fighter merchandise in America is near impossible, so that's where Bai comes in. Bai.jp lets me shop stores and auction sites in Japan and import them here to my collection. They handle language barriers, currency exchanges, all of it. And with Bai, look! Some of the Toho monsters that only appeared in Zone Fighter. His car, the Mighty Liner, which I'm obsessed with! And these character dolls of Zone Fighter, Zone Angel, Zone Junior, and the evil Gold Garuga. Bai sponsored this video, and as a gift, you can sign up for an account with the link in this video's description and get 2,000 yen of free spending money to celebrate Zone Fighter or whatever else. He killed Gigan! Enjoy the video. Flight time! Yeah! The time has come. Today, I'm gonna show you one metric ton of Godzilla knockoff and bootleg toys. The cheap stuff. The stuff that has no shame in trying to deceive you into thinking it's somehow official Godzilla merch. The stuff that you yourself might have owned at some point, unaware that it wasn't legitimate. This video will be part one of two, and we're going in no special order, so let's dive right in. And I'll be rating all of these because... Because... Dorme. Hey Vern, this is a large Imperial Godzilla, about 12 inches high. And this guy was around in the 1980s and the 1990s. But there's also a chance many, many of you had this guy instead. This is a 1997 Godzilla knockoff by Dorme, made in China. He takes a lot of inspiration from the Imperial Godzilla, but he's also doing his own thing. Mostly in that his dorsal plates seem to have shrinkage. Hey, come on, the water was cold. This figure, and variations of him, were all over the market. And the crazy thing is, this knockoff is arguably better than the Imperial. It's bigger at almost 15 inches. It's heavier, it feels like it's made of a good thick plastic. He articulates in his tails, legs, arms, and neck. The Imperial Godzilla's neck can't turn. I am the superior Godzilla. This is probably the most popular knockoff we're gonna go over, and I hope it stirred up some nostalgia for a good chunk of you. A plus. Skateboarding Godzilla. Godzilla's riding that skateboard around the planet like the Silver Surfer. Oh, sorry. Not Godzilla. Universal Dinosaurs. This art doesn't even try to be not Godzilla. We have to point out the non-fall action because the box does twice. This dinosaur stands on skateboard, has a amazing non-fall action. Go forward and turn right automatically as soon as he comes to an edge. Why is edge in quotes? Do they mean metaphorically? Like he's about to go over the edge and have a mental breakdown? Here he is shooting some type of beam out of his mouth, you know, like the dinosaurs did. And we have a diagram of how it automatically turns when it comes to an edge. Non-fall action is pointed out everywhere on this box. And you might have noticed that this box is still factory sealed. I've never opened this before. So, for the first time, I'm gonna take a look at it. And sure enough, we have Godzilla on a skateboard. Unlike the box art, he's wearing boots. He literally put the boot in bootleg. Oh shoot, the figure pops right off the board. Ah, these be me peg legs. I lost me feet at sea. The skateboard's got two stickers, which are both peeling right off. Good thing this one says skateboard. I thought I was checking my cell phone. Here's not Godzilla giving a thumb up and being totally tubular, man. The bottom has a battery compartment, so I'll need two AA batteries to see this non-fall action. So I put two brand new batteries in and nothing's happening. Wow, looks like this toy really has non-working action. Funny thing is, all things considered, this is not a bad mold. He's got a bit of a crazy eyes going there, but this is a Godzilla figure, all right. It even has articulation in the arms. The head can turn. The tail turns, but not much when he's on the board. I can still play with it, I guess. Gnarly man! Cowabunga and such! Watch my non-fall- Hey! King of the Lizards. 
King of the Lizards is actually his name. It's not a title like King of the Monsters. This comes from a 2006 line called Creepy Classics. They had an official King Kong release, as well as some Universal Monsters, but no Universal Dinosaur, aka Godzilla. But when you can't get that license, you improvise. Here's a finger puppet holding a baseball bat, maybe so their lawyers can argue that the real Godzilla wouldn't play baseball. But he does, sucker! I'll see you in court! The poster art on the back is the most damning thing here. This giant T-Rex with long arms is breathing fire. Oh, but no dorsal plates, so at least they tried. Let's open this guy. Now the figure itself is not that Godzilla-like. I could buy that this is a generic lizard who loves baseball. The toy is really scuffed up for something that just came out of its packaging. It's weird how they filled the negative mouth space with red. It looks like he's eating a brick. The card art is funny when you take the toy out because now there's a cartoon hand thumbing Godzilla's crotch. Sorry, I mean the King of the Lizards, which I previously thought was Jim Morrison. Here's a figure with the same backing card and he's a full body toy. Once you take him out again, it's a bit less Godzilla-like. Right out of the package and he's got a giant yellow stain on his shoulder like a bird pooped on him. King of the Lizards can pass for an actual lizard. I've been to Florida, I can confirm their lizards stand upright and hold baseball bats. Last is this King of the Lizards card set, oddly in an oval shape. It's just a deck of cards, all with not Godzilla on the back. Maybe these toys weren't supposed to come out, but they leaked. Maybe somebody leaked the lizard. C minus, Radio Shack. Oh no, it's 1995 and you need a new 3 RCA audio video composite cable. What do you do? You go to Radio Shack, of course. And while you're in that tech store, you might stumble upon the next entry on this list. Wire Control the Dinosaur. You are transported back to a time when dinosaurs ruled the Earth. Roam the primeval forest with the most powerful creature that ever existed. Unless he's missing two AA batteries, then he's got no power at all. Wire Control Dinosaur is your basic Godzilla type. He's an upright green T-Rex with long arms and dorsal plates running down his back. With the Wire Controller, you can make him walk forward and backward, turn, and you can light up his red eyes. The most damning thing is the packaging. Look at this art of Wire Control Dinosaur. It looks like an Imperial Godzilla figure. Hell, it looks more like an Imperial Godzilla than the actual Imperial Godzilla art. There was a Stegosaurus 2, for those of you who hate copyright infringement. B minus. Yellow gun. It's a yellow gun! With the trigger right in his crotch. Godzilla's weenus is the trigger. Yeah, just pull that right there. So this is very Godzilla. It checks all the boxes. It's a full body Godzilla, although maybe their lawyer would argue that the real Godzilla doesn't have this many screws in him. There's some type of white thing behind his legs. Looks like a bone or a boner. Some rough paint spots on this guy. Godzilla's holding some type of egg that he looks like he's gonna throw to a wide receiver. I got the Mothra egg, go long! He's got some googly eyes going. And you can guess by the green thing in his mouth that he can blow bubbles. Although the gun only operates as a fan, it doesn't actually hold the bubble fluid. So point goes to the Imperial bubble blower who also has googly eyes, weird. Here's what happens when I flick his wing. I've even seen pictures of it in its packaging where it's called Dinosaur Music. Wait, Dino Say Music? Dino Swa Music? We can watch its bubble action though. I've got some of my own bubble fluid here and yep, it blows bubbles. I mean, it's kind of hard to mess up a bubble blower. It's easier to mess up spelling dinosaur. It does well, it shoots fast. We're gonna have to try looking at it in slow motion. I like it. B plus. Tyranno toes. I have these official Godzilla feet slippers made by Toy Vault, but years earlier in 1989, I could have had Tyranno toes roar. This is like the least threatening roar I've ever seen. He's just like, roar. Hey man, roar. Tyranno Toes comes from Brute Boots, and they're described as dinosaur slippers to make your feet roar. 
So back off, copyright lawyers. These make your feet roar. We all know Godzilla roars with his mouth. You slip a 9-volt battery into each foot, and apparently regular walking makes it growl, while stepping down harder will cause a roar. Tyranno toes have three big toes just like Godzilla does, sometimes, and also big black spots. I can't speak to the roar since I haven't heard it, but overall this seems different enough to pass off as just dinosaur feet. Except for this package art. This is where they really veered into Godzilla knockoff territory with a not-so-thunderous roar, C+. We're halfway through this list, but I'm gonna need to take a break here for my own sanity. Catch the next episode of Playtime for more Godzilla knockoff and bootleg toys. Until then.